Good morning and welcome to the Mike Show for Monday, July 8, 2024. 65 degrees at 7.15 a.m. and I am your host, Fa Kamal. And I'm still a sinner. I'm powerless and my life is unmanageable. Humility and gratitude are the keys to life. It's always today and it's always now. My life is not my own. My will will not be done. There's no reality but God, and the only thing we got to do is die. So how are we going to live today? I hope and pray I can live from my heart, a life based on faith and not fear. Where do we begin today? I guess we'll start with I'm sitting here with Maxie. Princess was down here, but Maxie scared her away. Sullivan is outside. Max and Sully did go outside. It's really humid again, and the conjurers are calling for thunder and you know, lightning today, storms. We'll see how accurate that pans out, turns out. Uh, I guess we'll start with yesterday's thumbnail, and that was Sage and Stewart. And Sagey showed up. We lost mischief on, oh boy, June 23rd, 2007, yeah, six, one or the other. And Sagey showed up like two weeks after we lost mischief. He'd be out in the yard where I first saw him. I had an S10 pickup truck back at that time, and it had sliding windows on a standard cab on the back. The back window was a sliding window, and I'd get up to go to work or wherever, and Sage would be inside my truck. I don't know who abandoned him. He was neutered, and uh, anyway, he was a good boy, and it took us a while to get him in and get him checked out. Made sure he had his shots. But he was a sweet, sweet boy. Butterball was one of his nicknames because he was like eight or nine pounds when he was living on the streets. And he ballooned up to almost, I think, 25 pounds. But And Stewie was... Uh, Stewie was showed up as a kitten when we lived over in our apartment on Lockwood Street. It was Mischief Rascal and I, and I found this little kitten, Stuart, eating bird seed in the yard. He was starving, and I lured him in and adopted him. So that's who that photo was, Uncle Stuart and, and Sagey. But uh, I don't know if I'll talk more about them or not. I don't know what you people want to hear about, about my life, my drinking days, my kitties crazy things I do, my biking, this is my life, this is what it is, it's mostly cats, coffee, and riding bicycles, anyway, um, we did get a good ride in yesterday, we went out Misery Bay Road to North Point Shores, to Indian, to El Cajon, um, a short piece of Hamilton and then back uh, on North Point Shore to Misery Bay to home. Saw a couple people out there, a hunting camp. They were posting um, no trespassing signs. Don and he, his son Eli and had a little chat with them and came home and hung out with the cats. Pretty much that's all we did all day. I conjured up a really good omelet again. It was tomatoes and onions and cheddar and I don't know we got a question yesterday about what is Fa Kamal and it's more like it's it's an attitude I have but it's also my my YouTube personality but sometimes the lines are blurred between who this person is and who I am in reality and I think in some instances I'm a little of both Oh, yeah. What else can we tell him, Mackie? Hmm? 
We've got a nice purr going. We talked to Paige yesterday. The little kittens that were born on July 3rd are all doing well. And we are going to get two of them, I think, when they're when they're weaned. We need some new life in this home. Um I'm gonna take a break. Welcome back, and I don't really mean that, and I didn't mean it when I said good morning either. We're getting a good whiff of that linden tree out there. It won't be much longer before that scent is gone, but they are blooming all over town. And up the street, uh, two or three houses down, there's a northern catalpa, I believe it is, that smells really good right now in this neighborhood. Maxie just turned around. Uh-oh, scratching the ear. You all right, Bobby? I had another night where I had better sleep than I've had in several days now, but... I was still pretty much on the hour and bouncing back and forth to from Audie's bed in the living room to the bed upstairs. And everyone came and surrounded me. And that's always a good feeling. Nothing like having a kitty purring you, hey? And they are all such, such unique personalities. And they are quite social despite the reputation and the rumors, although there are loners among them. They are very social creatures and beings. Oh, we got some city... No, those are... Looks like some grackles out there and maybe some doves, and now some city chickens coming down. Oh, I was going to say something more about Seiji. Seiji was a good boy, though. He was a lover. He'd go with anybody, and he was a talker. Boy, was he a talker. And Stewie, Stewie survived a real brutal attack by some people that were, a couple young girls that were walking a dog and literally had his whole stomach torn open by this thing. It was like an 80 or a 90-pound dog, and Stewie fought for his life, and I heard these little girls laughing and, about it. They couldn't control the dog they were walking, and then the whack job owner of that dog came over, and one of Stuart's claws was in its nose, and she's freaking that he had, did he have his rabies shots and all that, and threatened to sue me and call the police because her dog attacked my cat on my property, and I told her, go ahead. And that one ended up being like a $600 bill. He went and hid underneath the the bed, I had no idea how hurt he was, and then when I got him out, it was a miracle he survived, it really was. But Stewie was a good boy, Uncle Stuart. For a long time, he was the glue that held us all together after we lost Uncle Mischief and Uncle Rascal. But I could talk for hours about these cats. When I go through these pictures that I've been going through to find thumbnails and get reminded of my time with them, you know, and that's where the best days of my my life have been, really, with, with these cats, you know. And there was a time, <laughs> I was so broke I couldn't pay attention, as I like to say. But we made it through it, you know, and when we had the ten cats after we adopted Mama Margie and Max and Mike and Chloe and Gavin, and we already had Rascal, Stuart, Blackie, Sagey. Who was the fifth one? Was it Tony? No, it was Elsie. Yeah, because Tony disappeared. But you know, I was I was going to college on a three quarter, you know, class load working part-time at a gas station, delivering newspapers, doing work-study, tutoring people. And those were the, some of the best times of our lives. I don't know how we were going to make it back then, but we did, you know. And two days a week, we got out of work at the gas station at midnight, and the newspapers had to be delivered at 3.30. So I didn't get much sleep, and it was easier on those days just to stay awake. So I'd be awake for like 28 hours straight, Tuesdays and Thursdays. 
But those were good times. Those were real good times. Oh, we're back again. We had to come see the linden tree. And I guess looking at it, you see that the, the flower petals are turning brown, but they'll be around for a bit more. There's that Sullivan. There's Sully. You having a good adventure, Sullivan? You having a good adventure, buddy? I know where you were. You were in Mrs. Smith's yard, weren't you? You're not supposed to go over there. Come on in, Bubby. So anyway, we're cooking some beans to make some hummus. And we're drinking Costa Rican coffee. Bouncing all over as usual. Still no apples on this apple tree. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. On tap for today, we're going to make that hummus. We can't completely make it till we need to run to Meyer to get some olive oil. And they got good olive oil there. They got a good selection. I buy the Bragg brand. And it's tough to find good olive oil. It's one of them things, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors. A lot of it really isn't olive oil. Not pure anyway. But yeah, that'll be the plan. I think I might ride the sete out to Norway Ridge and then hit Meyer on the way back. Um, couple news items I was looking at yesterday. This woman, my age, retired, having trouble living on $3,700 a, a month. <laughs> I'm thinking, man, I could set up my own fiefdom on that. But it has to do with wants and needs, you know, and my needs are met, my wants are few. And there's that silly. Come on in, Bubby. What are you what are you trying to tell me, honey? What are you trying to tell me? You're a good boy, aren't you? You can be a real ball breaker sometimes, but you're a good boy and I love you. Uh oh. I was gonna read the 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 reading from the 20 hour, 24 hour book too, so we'll do that. There is a force for good in the world and when you are cooperating with that force for good, good things happen to you. You have free will, the choice to be on the side of right or on the side of wrong. This force for good we call God's will. God has a purpose for the world and he has a purpose for your life. He wants you to bring all your desires into one with oneness with his desires. He can only work through people. If you try to make God's will your will, you will be guided by him. You will be in the stream of goodness, carried along by everything that is right. You will be on God's side. I pray that I may try to make God's will my will. I pray that I may keep in the stream of goodness in the world. Yeah. When I was talking earlier about having 10 cats to take of and being so broke I couldn't pay attention and all that, I know that was one of the times of my life when I was in that stream. And uh, I know there's lots of others and I'm struggling and clawing and fighting my way to get back in there right now. So anyway, Another thing I wanted to mention from yesterday, and I'm not going to go into too much detail of it, but, uh, you know, it's quite obvious and has been obvious to me and other people that don't buy the BS the media tries to feed us that the man that's running this country is not competent and capable of doing it, let alone the fact that he's a child sniffer. Uh, who knows how much vice and graft and grift and criminal activity he's been involved in. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the open border is treason. He's not protecting us. Uh, but I don't want to get into too much of that. Where was I going with it anyway? Uh, no, but they're just, they're acting like this is perfectly normal and it's acceptable. There's certain parties that are saying, oh, he's just old, you know, and he's really doing good. No, no, he's not. He's not, and people are acting like they're just noticing it now and that it's just happening now. It's happened since day one, since he took office. 
But uh, they've been putting the governor of this state, uh, her name's come up as a possible presidential candidate if Brandon drops out. This woman is evil. That's all I can say. Just look at what she did during COVID. Look what she's done during her reign here. Uh, backdoor deal with a, the Chinese, the People's Republic of China being able to purchase land and put up a battery factory in this state, paid for partly with taxpayer money. Uh, during COVID, she traveled to Florida when the rest of us were locked down. Uh, definitely another rules for thee and not for me. Opened up her summer home in Traverse City. Uh, there, you know, I could go on and on and on in the, that vein, but this woman is evil. She is evil. Just look in her eyes. So, anyway, I have. I'm, I'm in one of the modes where I could yammer on forever, but I don't think anybody wants to hear me do that. Do you really? I'm wondering why you do it now, my faithful viewers. Are you laughing at me or laughing with me? Because I do both. Anyway, it's Happy Monday from the cold gray ashes and coals of my cold black heart, my broken, beaten, battered, bruised, bloody, burdened, empty, hollow, cracked, shattered, hopeless, forsaken, forlorn, bitter, angry, tired, resentful, twisted, convoluted, confused, grieving, I am a little happy right now and to see I have a lot of great to be grateful for. So piss off and happy Monday and thanks for not tuning in.